Hi, I'm David. I'm a saddle specialist with Voltaire Design. What many people won't know about me is that I used to be an international competition groom and I'm here today to give you some helpful tips for the upcoming Voltaire Design Badminton Grassroots Championships. I think the biggest thing when you're travelling away from home is not to be daunted by it. I think it's very easy to think, oh, we're going to badminton, it's going to be very big and very scary, and it is, but I think it's no different really to going to any normal competition. You just need to take a few more things with you and you're going to stay away for a bit. I think it's very easy to overcomplicate it. I mean, you have to know what you've got and we'll do some lists so everybody can check our checklist and you can go from that and that'll help you. And we basically work with other people, speak to your trainers, make sure that you know that you've got everything that they suggest. Don't overpack. I mean, it's very, I know people would take a first aid kit for their horse, which is enormous. I mean, you need the basics in a first aid kit, but if you've got a real problem at somewhere like badminton horse trials, the vets are there to help you, so you don't need to take your massive medical kits. Badminton horse trials, obviously, the nerves are probably starting to kick in already. The biggest thing that you can do with anything in life is just to be organised. I mean, if you leave everything to the last minute, that never helps with the stress levels. And you need to make sure that you make sure that you know your horse is vaccinated, so you know that you're not doing that at the last minute because when you get there and your horse isn't vaccinated and you can't compete, you're going to be very upset. And you need to be looking at things like that now. Look at a farrier plan now so you know that when you get to the point of the event, I mean, really, you should, what the best way to do it is work back from cross country day from the event and work back every however many weeks, every five or six weeks, however you shoe your horse. I mean, it sounds like a long time to badminton, but actually when you work it on that scale, it's not, it comes around very quickly. And these are the type of things that if you just do these now, then you get, suddenly when you get into March and April and badminton really is looming and breathing down you, you're not suddenly thinking, oh my God, I haven't vaccinated my horse or my shoeing's out of sync or the physio needs doing and I need to jump it tomorrow. I mean, just have, just have a structure and a plan and stick to it and you will get speed bumps along the way like horses are fantastic self-harmers and you will get speed bumps along the way but if you've got a basic plan then you can stick to that as much as possible but it's very important to just make sure that you're make sure your, your vaccinations are in order for definite and then just your farrier plan shouldn't change even if your horse is off and just get some basics in order just so you've ticked a few boxes now it may seem like badminton's a long time away, but it's not. Horses take to travelling away from home better than others. It's, it's some horses, you can put them on a ferry and put them on an aeroplane and they travel like they've been doing all of their lives. Some horses genuinely are warriors. Some of you will find that when you get to badminton, your horses will be a bit nervous. And I mean, the best thing to do with them is just try and keep a routine. Like, if sometimes they don't like being in the tunnel in the in the stables because they've got the tunnel and the roof over them and if it's windy they make a bit of noise. I think it's just being there and reassuring them. Make sure you take them out for lots of walks and lots of grass and just try and keep them relaxed. I think the worst thing you could do is just to ignore them and hope that they're gonna stop doing it, because then they're just gonna get stressed and a stressed horse isn't gonna do very well in the competition for you. So I think it's your, you basically just need to try and try and keep the routine as much to what you can at home. Like, you don't need to override them, but horses that live out at home, they do take yourself a nice book and go and sit in the middle of the field somewhere. You, you're up on the beautiful old airfield at Badminton, where the steeplechase used to be for years and years and years for us oldies and go and soak in the history of that field. I mean, it's an iconic field. You are really lucky over on that airfield. There's a vast amount of space. There is going to be a hacking route, which if you don't know where it is or you can't find it, you can ask the secretary or the state manager and they'll be able to send you on your way, but there'll be a lovely big hacking route. And that's another way, if your horse is feeling a bit stressy, just go for a nice long hack and just go and chill them out. But just, it's all just about keeping their routine and just trying to keep them nice and quiet and lots of grazing and lots of pats and lots of treats and just telling them they're okay.